Welcome back to Keystone Hobbies. If you like our content, feel free to help support us on patreon.com forward slash Keystone Hobbies. Discord link is in the description. Come play with us. Nate, thanks for being a Patreon member. I'm John, and we are joined yet again by AJ and also Laura. Welcome on the show, guys. Hello. Well, thank you. How's thanks everybody's so week? How's everyone? AJ? Well, you go. You go first, John. Uh, I'm aside feeling, from I'm feeling uh, Christmas. yeah, aside from the uh, the Christmas planning, uh, not a not a crazy amount going on. Uh, been playing a lot of Dead by Daylight and uh, some Loopy Row still. Been uh, been pretty stuck on that game. Um, I did recently have a uh, a traffic incident where there were no people injured, but I got to do the most passive aggressive thing, and it felt very good. So I'm cruising uh, on, uh, on the, you know, the Faxon exit over by Water Tower Square? Yeah. Well, I'm getting onto the highway heading towards Williamsport. And you know how that intersection can be a little dicey to merge there, right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, anyways, I, I'm trying to get on the highway. I get up to speed the whole nine yards. And there's this person. And not only are they driving in the right-hand lane, there's nobody in the left whatever like i can adjust my speed and get get past you like, either get past you or get behind you well what's this person do they match my speed at first like i'm i'm going a solid 60 and and they speed up a little bit and then i slow down to, to almost 45 and they slow down to match and I, at first i didn't know if they were just dumb or being a a rude driver or whatever but you know the, finally i like i hit the gas again i get around them uh there's not very much room to to maneuver but just just drive the speed limit and let the other the person merging figure things out like anyways that isn't even the worst of it so i get in the left hand lane i pass them and they are riding the back of the car in front of them and I'm, I'm a little bit farther ahead in traffic they're riding the ass of the car behind, in front of them. And I can see this in my review mirror. I'm like, oh, they're kind of driving like a prick. And then they decide that they're going to whip around them. They get up right up on my bumper. So I speed up some, you know, I get out of the way. And when I get off the highway and I, I or when I get off into the right lane, they cut behind the, uh, the car behind me, cut them off completely. The other car, you could see the car vis visibly shift. Uh, cause they had to apply their brakes hard enough. So they didn't hit this car that just jumped in the lane. This person's behind me at this point. I'm like, my gosh, like, uh, did wow. I piss this person off? Like, I, I don't know what's going on. I, I still, to this day, I'm not sure what happened, but anyways, we both end up getting off the Maynard exit. So I, I get off there and nine, maybe like 90% of the traffic that gets off the Maynard exit takes a left. Uh, and then, you know, a decent amount takes the right there. So I'm like, you know what? I, I'm kind of tired of this person. So I get off on that exit. The light had just turned green. I go down to about five miles per hour in the left-hand lane. And I just coast down that exit until the light goes yellow. And then right when it turns red, I shift over into the right lane and just take my right on red. <laughs> As I was looking over to see if I could, I could turn, I see them. They are visibly cursing me out in the driver's side. And just like, ah, I could see, they were so mad. Um, but yeah, I just, uh, you know, I casually just waved and kept on going my own way. I, I don't know what was going on with that person, but they're having a, a tough time. And I made it a little bit harder. Their cereal wasn't that good that day, I guess. Yeah. How about it? Wow. That's a, that's a mess. I don't. I definitely hate to whenever um, people try to like mitigate like their speed whenever you're merging on like we're the pre people yielding like let us yeah yeah let us and, figure it out. and all the while I'm trying to I'm trying to get my uh, my uh, uh, rotations done and doking and like you know I I need to get this stuff done and I have to worry about other drivers yeah. on the road like if everybody's doing what they're supposed to I should have no problems playing playing doking yeah exactly and, like, oh lord. <laughs> I get the same way sometimes. Yeah. Yep. As long as it's uh, not in a in a my Kia. Of course not. <laughs> yeah, that didn't okay. happen in 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 our car. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. 
All right. Well, before I tell on myself anymore, AJ, how's your week been, man? Uh, mine, mine's been uh, pretty good. Um, some ups, some downs um, on my five-day weekend, so um, can't nice. complain with that. I get off on uh, Christmas and get to spend some time with the family. Um, I went out with some friends last night. went out to a bar. It was up to like four in the morning. Oh, my. Not nothing new for me. But... Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> You're usually a night owl, huh? Oh yeah. Um, I got into a little accident myself. Uh, just uh, over the past week. Oh, um, sorry to hear about that. Yeah, well, it could have been worse. I I think I I saved myself. It'd be really on it. funny if it was AJ that was the one behind you. <laughs> He's like, there was this dick driving. There's this person obviously playing Doken on their phone, trying to merge onto the highway and. <laughs> See, I I never want to be mean to people on the highway either, because like. I don't want to ever get into an awkward situation where I'd be cursing somebody out and then I see him and I'm like, oh, hey, John, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, I think in that situation, like if if I if I was obviously in the right on the highway and I saw and I was like mm. pissed at somebody and like cursing him out or whatever, and it ended mm. up being somebody I knew, I'd double down. I'd be like, you know oh. better, Judith. Come on. <laughs> Oh, and it's funny, too, because if we're both in the car and we're having a situation like that, John's like, you look at them. You look at them so hard and so angry, you and just, you tell me what they look like, and he makes me describe them. Yeah, I need to, like, if you're driving poorly, I need to know not only, like, what's going on, but what you look like so that I can remember uh, and be biased towards that demographic in the future. Nine times out of the ten, little old women with gray hair. Oh my gosh, for sure. And I'll yeah. be like, John, she can't see over the dash. <laughs> like there was one little lady that literally like, there's no way. She's shorter than me. I'm only 5'2". Like, John, she she's sitting on me. only so many, you can only sit on so many phone books and drive. Yeah. She like, her, like she was so far down in the seat. I'm like, there's no freaking way she can see. There is no way. Like I could barely see the tip of her little purple hair. Like a, I was like, this is not good. John, you're not going to believe this. I can't see the driver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, my gosh. Um, uh, yeah, but um, I hit uh, an ice patch going onto an on-ramp. Um, you know how, like, if you were getting on the highway, um, like, from the Crick Road to, like, go towards, like, Maynard? Yeah. There's that. And there are a lot of trucks wreck right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, it was slippery, and I was probably going too fast. I think I was going, like, 35, 40. Um, Respect. And hit an ice patch, and the front of my car was heading straight for the guardrail, and um, I, I adjusted it just well enough that the side hit. Like, because you know how, like, if your back end goes, like, you want to turn towards the back end? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, to get straightened out. Well, after I did that, I was already in the right-hand lane, so I was too close to the guardrail at that point and couldn't really stop. So I, I, I bit the bullet and, um, actually it surprisingly it was not bad. Good, good. But, yeah. Sometimes um, there's only, you know, only so much you can do and you just have to like mitigate the damage that's going to happen as best as possible. But like yeah. expect that. Yeah. I might get in an accident here. Yeah, and I I kind of just accepted it, and it was sad because it just went so slow in my head, and then yeah, <laughs> I've like, I've been but, in um, one like that before in Ohio where we were in bumper to bumper traffic, and it ended up neither of us filed a claim or anything because there wasn't even a scratch on their car, but I definitely hit their car because they stopped really suddenly. And there was a car behind me and I was like, I can either like gently tap this car or I can get, if I slam on the brakes really hard, I'm going to get slammed from the rear end at, um, yeah. of the car. So I like tapped the car and I was like, oh, son of a bitch. Because I've never really had an accident um, or point yeah. or anything on my license. So I was like freaking out about it. But there was like not even a scratch in their car. They got out there like, everything's fine. Like, I'm good if you're good. And I'm like, and their car 
that's when I had the old an old Buick, and their car was like a brand new car. I'm like, if they're not gonna make a thing of this, I am not gonna make a thing of this because my car is worth like two grand. <laughs> yeah. My take little that, old take, tank is take that dub and, take that dub and run with it. Right. Yep. Uh, how's your uh, week been, Laura? It's been pretty good, you know, working, um, getting prepared for the holiday. I'm going to be cooking a meal tomorrow, so it's going to be um, a busy day, but we're going to have a lot of fun. Um, we're pretty excited. Uh, I always love Christmas. So. Every time I go downstairs, I see a cheesy white guy and a blonde woman talking about Christmas every single time I've been downstairs. How have the Christmas movies been this year? Um, the Christmas movies have been pretty good. You know, everything is a repeat of the other things. Um, there's very few that are original ideas, but I still like to watch them. Um, last night I watched How the Grinch Stole Christmas with Jim Carrey, which is probably one of my favorite Christmas movies. Um yeah, so, I, I never that. realized how, like, whimsical the camera angles they did on that were. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I haven't checked back into that movie, but uh, while you were watching, I stopped in for a minute there to, to, to watch a bit. And, yeah, the the camera angles are really good. The, the, the prosthetics and, like, you know, all that stuff, the makeup, really good on that movie. I forgot how good it actually was. Yeah, it's, it's a great movie. Like, it's... It's a nice take on the storyline, and you're right. The props and like the makeup and just the the scenery in that movie is really great. But um, so I guess we should say, what's our favorite Christmas movie? That's a good a good topic. Gosh, I I have, I'm gonna have to go with Elf. Either that or Elf. Die Hard. Oh, you can't okay. do the oh Die Hard like that's so cliche. I th I think it's fair though. I think Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Uh, if you say otherwise, you're wrong. Fight me. Um, <laughs> but if uh, if you think it's a cliche to have that as your favorite Christmas movie, I can at least accept that. Yeah. No, it's definitely a Christmas movie. I just think it's a cliche Good thing. One. Mine's so, gonna be even more cliche. Uh, so. What's that? What's yours, AJ? <laughs> uh, I gotta go with the classic Home Alone. Just... Oh yeah, Home Alone's oh. good. Home Alone's good. Home Alone is so good. It's, that's a, a pretty like, I guess all of them in in some sort of way are are pretty common. But... Mine's definitely Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, <sighs> John and I both one. love that movie so much. That's a good pick. Like we have a bunch of stuff in our house that's Nightmare Before Christmas. We love that movie. Like it's such a good movie. Yeah, I, I don't. I count that, that as like an all-encompassing holiday movie. So like, yeah, I guess, I guess that is my favorite Christmas movie when it comes down to it. Yeah, it, it even has the Easter Bunny in it. It does technically. Yeah, it has all the all the people. It's it's every holiday. Brings all the holidays right into Christmas. Yeah. 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 So. All right. Well, uh, some some topics to talk about today. Um, Resident mm -hmm. Evil fans, uh, we got some bad, bad, uh, information, some bad news recently. Uh, Resident Evil Code Veronica fan remake, uh, just got canceled by Capcom just before it got released. So for anybody who isn't aware, uh, there's a discord community that was working on a Resident Evil Code Veronica fan remake. Uh, and it looked like the new Resident Evil 2 game or Resident Evil 3 games, like complete re remake, uh, better graphics, like everything looked really good. Um, but the developers announced uh, earlier uh, this week that uh, uh, Capcom emailed them a, a cease and desist and demand that they stop. Um, and I think what ended up uh, causing Capcom to start some action is because there were donation links in their Discord, and Capcom saw it as them profiting from their IP. So unfortunately, since they had donation links, the, the project, even though it's completely, almost like it's just, it was supposed to release like next week or something, like super soon, um, and uh, it's completely scrapped, along with the uh, Resident Evil 1 remake remake that they were working on, so... Oh, I'm surprised uh, 
Capcom didn't like so they didn't think about the community, I guess, because if they really did, um, they would think about buying the rights to the game, I feel like. That's what I'm thinking. I'm like, why not make that as an opportunity to say, hey, you know, These developers did getting, a good job. It, getting it for, like, a much less price than they probably would have paid to ha- to hire a team of people. I mean, heck, yeah. That, yeah. it's not like they're going to be able to sell it now, right? So, Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, just I mean, for them that to do, like, a really that's good job. And, yeah. Yeah, for that to be scrapped, AJ, it's... uh. Ugh. Yeah, it's it's not great, but you know, it, it is what it is. I mean, um I mean, it Capcom at least will let those projects go until mm-hmm. they see that somebody's uh profiting. Uh I can at least respect that whereas for like uh some of those things that are making money off the IP, um what's a recent example? Um I don't know, one of the the blatant things that ticks me off is with like Nintendo how they uh, they cancel like uh, 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 Super Smash tournaments because it's using their IP and, that and all that stuff Smash. like that that drives me nuts with IP and how they're they're protecting their into intellectual property but um, I I can kind of see it when somebody's making a profit but when it's just yeah. like fan made content um, I'd really like to see that stuff get be able to flourish yeah I mean, oh, like, just as like a, a business um like looking at it in the a business side like i would think that like for capcom like these people care a lot about the game like resident evil yeah as a whole why wouldn't you want to like hire these people instead of just hiring some random game designer that doesn't have like really any knowledge on resident evil but is good at their job Exactly. Yeah. I mean, the the community put this together and I mean, shit, we we've dealt with all these bad, terrible resident evil movies and they've been really bad. Like the best things for resident evil that have been released recently are in dead by daylight, which is pretty fucking sad. Like it's pretty sad. Um, but we're, we're big fans of the franchise. So like, for John and I, it's 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 rough when things like that happen. I don't really play the games as much as he does, but I do like to watch him play the games. Um, I like to die a lot in the games, <laughs> and um, I you know I like the movie most of the movies and stuff. I like to see them. I like to see. I, I'm I love zombie stuff. Um, so for me, it really stinks that this happened because we both love like Resident Evil. We like the games. We like the movies like john's brother is very into it as well like his whole family like really likes you and your brother really like resident evil so it's just it's crazy to me that you know there's so much love for this game and they're just like meh you know it's fine we'll do whatever with it but is what it is is what it is no big deal um but hey we uh we have some exciting releases coming in january um, I know we kind of fall into a lull after Christmas uh, with video game releases, but there are a couple uh, uh, gems in the rough. There's uh, a lot of ports coming out, but uh, I'm going to breeze by some of these uh, and the ones that I'm familiar with, I'll, I'll tell a little bit about. And then uh, before release week of these games, we'll uh, do a little bit more of a deep dive into what they are and what to expect. But Starting January, uh, er, January twelfth is the first game we're really looking into um, for uh, for releases next year, and that's uh, Lone Ruin. It is a twin stick shooter. It's kind of a combo between the uh, retro like eight bit style and three uh, D graphics. So you have like these three D eight sixteen bit characters running around and it's twin t- twin stick shooter so you're using both the sticks and you're just shooting around you you have magic there's monsters shooting at you it's uh looks like uh and and the landscape is beautiful they did a, a cool a lot of cool effects with the lighting so lone ruin coming out for pc and the switch january 12th January 12th, we also have Vengeful Guardian Moonrider. This is coming out for the PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Switch, and PC. Uh, 
it is a uh, retro throwback title. It's a platformer, uh, and it reminds me a lot, if any of you are familiar with the uh, game Hanagane, The Final Conflict, from the Super Nintendo, which is a super rare, like, collector game, because uh, it was only released for in, in Blockbusters, actually. That's the only way you could get it, is renting it from Blockbusters, so not too many private collectors have this game. Uh, I definitely didn't play it using roms and emulators like most everybody else that has had experience with the game has played it but um it has like a a samurai uh you're like a, a metal samurai in a uh, in a futuristic world uh and that's kind of the uh the, the the vibe of it so you're you're destroying these flying uh flying helicarriers and that have little uh, uh shooting missiles on them and stuff and uh, you have a little... I've definitely not seen you play this game on an emulator either. Yeah, totally haven't. <laughs> never have have I, never have I ever. Never have you ever. <laughs> uh, AJ, this this might perk you up a little bit. Uh, January thirteenth, we have Dragon Ball Z Kakarot getting a PlayStation Five, Xbox Series X slash S release, and it is a free upgrade for any existing owners. And. I've been thinking about getting that game just on Steam. Uh, it's I don't think it has any multiplayer to it. It's like an all campaign thing, but a lot of people have good reviews about it. Um, yeah, I've heard I've heard really good things about it. It's a really good Dragon Ball story, and uh, it it brings you through the uh, Dragon Ball Z world. And um, I think it tells like a side story, doesn't it? Uh not the I. No, I haven't. So I haven't looked into it because I am like kind of interested in it. So like I haven't looked into like the actual yeah. gameplay. We'll have um, to ask. Uh, we'll ask that, have to ask Greg and uh, Tyler because uh, I think Greg actually has played it before. Okay. Yeah, we'll have to see get his opinion on it for uh, uh, the next episode. That'd be cool. The only way I want to see it is if it's all trunks, all trunks all the time. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, if you get trunks with the purple hair, lore is all over it. <laughs> they go through, um, they released a DLC, I think, for the Bardock saga. Um, they went through, like, the Saiyan saga with, like, Raditz, Frieza, I believe Cell Saga's in there as well. You know, that's, oh, that's, cool. that's a DLC I'm, I'm really okay with. Like, I, I'm not a big fan. Like, this is Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, right? Like, I'm expecting, like, a certain plot line, a certain uh, era for this to take place. And then if they release DLC that, like, expands into different areas of, uh, of the Dragon Ball universe, I think that's, that's actually a good use of DLC. Uh, yeah. I'm tired of these game manufacturers releasing 30% of a game and then the 70% of it's DLC. Yeah, that's that's like a uh, Dragon Ball Fighter Z and also um Xenoverse is majorly DLC. Yeah, you hate to see it. I I I haven't even followed like the Final Fantasy 7 remakes that they've made cuz um it seems like the games are just like little blocks of 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 just DLC. So I don't, yeah. I don't know if I'm going to follow those, those too much, but you know, it is what it is. It's just the world we live in. These uh, developers have to make their money somehow. And I don't know, maybe it's just cause we have so many indie developers that uh, they aren't making as much as they used to. They need to uh, try and trick us into paying for the rest of a game. I mean, they definitely they straight away so much from worrying about moving on to the next game and thinking about oh how can we keep this game alive yeah yeah nope i it's uh it's interesting to say the least yeah but uh what are we gonna do about it uh i i think we just complain and uh continue to pay the money on the properties we care about right like i yeah this is the world we live in I think it all started with like a uh, guitar hero and rock band, those games where they're like, Hey, instead yeah. of re-releasing new games, let's just make DLC for all of these ga for all of these songs. Um, which it really made sense and got everybody very comfortable paying for that DLC when it was for a game like rock band. But then these companies were like, yeah, maybe if we branch this into like the sports games and, and RPGs and just start blowing up from there. Oh, but um, I was talking to Greg actually about this. I, I think 
because this goes into like with microtransactions and everything. Yeah. Um, I think it started with Call of Duty actually, and that I don't remember exactly, but I think it was either Japan or China. Um, Call of Duty's banned there. I don't know if it is now, um, but previously was. And surprise, surprise. I think I think Activision had gotten rights to make a game there, um, but it was completely online. It was just a multiplayer. What they did was take a bunch of Call of Duties, like favorite maps, favorite game or guns from like a bunch of different Call of Duties, and they made it free to play in the region. But there was a lot of like pay to win microtransactions that you could do to unlock like certain guns and um, stuff like that. And I think not long after that, because this was around when. Like Black Ops Two and Ghosts were out for us, so like we know that DLC was still a thing then. And then I think it's shortly after that, microtransactions started to really, really pop off and really start taking off. Yeah. Of Talk about boiling the frog, right? Yeah. Just slowly I, started I, introducing him, then crank that heat up. <laughs> See, that's the wish... problem, though. They they. They have all these microtransactions, but they haven't met me yet. Because I will literally <laughs> grind that effing game to get what someone has sp spent a dollar for rather than spending that dollar. I don't care if it takes me three years. I will do it. John has seen me do this. Like, I will literally go through. I Look at Strike Force. Like, Greg and Tiff were spending money all the time. John's like, I I'm just like waking up every like four hours or whenever I can do <laughs> stuff to play the game in the middle of the night he's like do you have alarms set to wake up and play strike force i'm like you're darn right i do <laughs> yeah laura was really dedicated to strike force she would wake up every four hours to make sure she got her blitz rotation in and uh back back in those days you had to actually battle through each map so a blitz rotation was at least 30 minutes uh laura took that game super seriously and you always got higher higher up in the percentage for maximum blitz scores for sure. Um I uh Absolutely. I I favored the cheat mentality. This is terrible to say, but uh I would just throw that shit on blue stacks and I had a macro just click the screen for me. We're getting through our blitz rotation, but I'm doing anything else for a half hour. Sorry, but not sorry. Yeah, and then when you had an extra phone, like if we were somewhere where you couldn't use couldn't use your blue stacks you'd be like hey laura do you want to do this for me and i would just sit there and i'd run yours through and there'd be times i'd be at greg and tiff's and i'd run like all four of your rotations for you while we're sitting there hanging out everyone else is talking and i'm like sitting there just like going through everyone's blue so rotations. i distinctly remember when greg moved into his house we were there using tiffany and greg's phone and we were we were doing all the blitz rotations Yep. Uh, those were the days. We had a we had a um, what are they called? A guild? Not a guild, but uh, an alliance. We had an alliance in a strike force of twenty four people, uh, which is the alliance size. Um, and it, it was a lot of that part of it was a lot of fun. But the grind of that game, and eventually they made everything. It became so much pay to win that we we all kind of slowly drifted our way off of that game. I think Tiffany lasted the longest though, but. She did. Sad that we always hate to see that. Yeah, it was it was sad, but anyways, uh got a couple more games to cut through here for releases in January. Um go ahead and pipe up if any of you guys any of you guys know anything more about the games, but we have One Piece Odyssey coming for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, PS4, Xbox One, PC, January 13th, One Piece Odyssey. We have, is that like off of One Piece, the anime? I believe so. I uh, oh. I, just, I, I don't have all the information on it, just the uh, titles that are being released. So we'll uh, we'll do a deep dive in, in all these things the week uh, before they come out. But um, yeah, I'm, we'll, we'll see about that. Uh, we also have a space for the Unbound, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC on the 19th. Colossal Cave. That's coming out for Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 5, Switch, and PC, January 19th. Persona 4 Golden. Uh, I don't believe this is a remake. Uh, 
I think it's a a, a re uh, a reimagining of the uh, Persona Four game, uh, but uh, we'll we'll give you some more information about that. Persona is a, uh, a pretty well liked fighting series, um, which uses like anime like characters uh, and it's a little fighter. Um, so we'll we'll have to see a little bit more about that. Uh, Shin Megami Tensei Persona Three Portable which is for PlayStation, Xbox, PC, and Switch, uh, as well, is coming out on the 19th. We have Fire Emblem Engage for the Switch on January 20th. Uh, I believe that is a little bit bigger of a title. So, um, yeah, looking forward to see what they do with that. Fire Emblem's, uh, they've, they've produced some pretty good, pretty good games in the past. We have... Monster Hunter Rise. Uh, I had to double check my release list to make sure that I had 2023 because January of 2022, they released Monster Hunter Rise, but they released it for PC. So now we're getting a port over to PlayStation 5, Xbox uh, uh, coming out this, uh, this year. So um, more platforms to be able to play that. Always good to see. We have Cart Rider Drift for PC, iOS, and Android. We have Forsaken for PlayStation 5, PC, January 24th. We have a Dead Space remake for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, S, and PC, January 27th. There is a uh, new port of Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition, uh, allowing players to play that on Xbox Series X, S, and Xbox One. January 31st season, a letter to the future PlayStation five, PlayStation four and PC on January 31st as well. So those are our January releases. Uh, it's looking like a, you know, a lot of ports, a lot of, uh, remakes, but uh, a couple, uh, uh, games that stand out there. So, uh, looking forward to trying a couple of those titles. I will be buying dead space. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you have 100%. a, do you have a history with dead space? Yes, I've I've played all of them. Um, Dead Space one, two, and three. I fell in love with them so quick. Such a good game. What's the uh, best line. part of it? The horror. <laughs> yeah, it is a terrifying, terrifying game. Um, a lot of uh, jump scares. Um, sometimes, especially starting out in the game, like there's a lot of times like. You don't get time to fight, like, you just gotta run. Um, you know, it's kind of like Resident Evil a little bit, like, you gotta conserve ammo here and there, so, like, sometimes, you, like, sometimes it's time to fight, and then other times it's like, nope, I'm, I gotta run. Um, that sounds, I might have to look into that. I, I haven't really gotten to the Dead Space games, they never really came into my radar. It's, it's a great yeah. game, I would always recommend it. Um, I'm assuming the one they're remaking is the first one. Yeah, Dead Space. Yep. Okay. Um, you could either wait for the remake on, or just uh, play through them now, or maybe you get the remake of the first one and see how you like it. But yeah, I know yeah. they're I'm, I'm they're not... really cheap. Yeah, are they? Yeah, no, they're pretty old games. Gotcha. I I might what I might end up doing is waiting to uh, see a couple people play the uh, the remake and see if they think the. Uh, uh, the higher price is worth it. Cause you know, I'm, yeah. I'm really not a, like a huge, like graphics nerd. Like if the game is built well, uh, and feels correct. And like, is at least immersive a little bit, I can see a couple polygons and be fine. Um, you know, not a big deal to me. Yeah. The only thing is, uh, dead space one in particular is very old. That used to be like a game on the 360 and like PS3. Oh, you're talking to the guy uh, who plays Super Nintendo games, so well, <laughs> I think uh, it'll be yeah. all right. Uh, I'm just worried if, um, like, if you got it off Steam, that if you could play the first one now, I mean, uh, you probably could. I don't think it would have too much trouble running on like Windows 10 or anything. But yeah, I know some games have like an issue with that. Gotcha. Yeah, we'll have to mm. have to check that out for sure. That sounds good. Well. Laura has been looking into Seven Days to Die Alpha 21. Laura, what yes. can you tell us about that? 
there's a lot of things that they're actually changing, correcting, editing. As you know, like Seven Days to Die has just kind of been in constant like remake. Um, it's been an alpha the... for what, like 20 years? Realistically, <laughs> like nine years, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But the thing is that they keep making the game better. So, you know, why would you not keep playing it? I love this game. It's like if Minecraft and Resident Evil had a baby, um, it would become, you know, Seven Days to Die. There's so many cool aspects of it. Um, some of the things that they're working on, I know that I'm really excited about. They're working on some modifications for their water, um, where, you know, normally when you're walking through water and stuff like that in Seven Days, it's, it's kind of a, a problem. Um, they're also modifying like you're not drinking like you're not finding like regular purified water in the environment like the, they have a new um like water filtration water distillment um, type of thing right yes yep um one of the big things is they're actually changing their perks so you used to be able to use like perks um like the strength tree the intelligence tree and things like that to unlock items now there's going to be magazines that you're searching for um instead of being able to just unlock items they you, you're going to have to find the information you're going to have to find these magazines now apparently they are working on getting these perks to actually help you know if you are say going after shotguns all the time you're you're using shotguns all the time that's supposed to help you if you you know use that perk to get a better chance to get magazines that deal with shotguns. But, you know, obviously we haven't seen gameplay really of Alpha 21 yet, so I'm not sure on that. That's just something that they're saying. Um, they're also removing the secret stash, which I, I don't know how I feel about this. Um, traders used to have a secret stash that you could, you, everybody's was kind of different. They're so getting like John's rid of my secret, secret stash. stash? Yeah, they're getting rid oh, of secret oh, no. stash. And they're becoming even more concentrated, like the traders are more concentrated on the items they normally have. You know, like Jen will have more health items and stuff. So I'm wondering how that's going to impact like starting out. Because if you start out with somebody that, you know, focuses on ammo and like guns, like that's great. But if you get Jen, which is health, like, is that going to screw you? And your gameplay for a while i think getting uh the trader i think it's trader joel that deals with uh like electronics i think that would be yeah. the crappiest trader to start with because you don't need that stuff until the late game so like yeah. not having as much access to uh weapons ammo and uh healing is gonna be pretty yeah. huge um or even wrecked because wrecked is all about food sure. so like like yeah food is important but if you're just getting like food items like you need them sometimes but after like day 10 you don't like food typically isn't that much of an issue no that makes um, sense uh with the secret stash too is like the the thing i'm thinking about is multiplayer so there's i usually play on bigger servers and a lot of the times the only way you get some items and get a chance is if it's in your secret stash like when I go to a trader, if we all have the same options um, and somebody buys the trader out of all the ammo and all the food, that's going to be really rough for, for multiplayer and servers. So I'm interested to see how these server owners uh, are going to combat that because they're going to have to figure something out because, you know, they get 40, you know, there's 40, 50 people who play on one server. Um, it's going to be pretty sparse. So we'll have to see how that balance is. And a lot of the POIs and stuff are, are looted, too. So it's it's not going to be easy, for sure. Um, I know that they're doing a huge art and decoration remake. Um, so, like, some of the cool things that I saw, like the different radio types. Um, they have, like, more car, different types of cars that you can tear apart, not that you can drive yet. Um, and they also are introducing environmental hazards. So, like, one of the things was, like, a gas leak, and it had, like, flame shooting out of it, and you had to turn 
a wheel to turn the gas off. So I thought that was really interesting to add because we don't have anything like that yet. So like in a POI, the doorway may be blocked by like a flaming thing or there might be, you know, maybe there's like electricity in the water or something like that. Like that's kind of cool. Like that classic movie trope where there's a busted pipe and fire just spraying out of it. You got to yeah. turn that crank to, to shut it off. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. They're introducing that. And uh, we have two um, new quest types. Uh, they have not, I have, I have not been able to find out what they are yet. They haven't introduced them yet, what they're going to be. And um, also two new armor types. They haven't fully modded the armor. I know that they're doing more modifications with that, but they're adding a commando. And I know it sounds like you're naked, but you're not naked. It's like an actual like army um, commando and then an iron armor. So that's pretty cool too. So my only worry of uh, things like you said was like so for the magazines, is that gonna be something that spawns separately for every player? Like somebody doesn't just grab that and then nobody else can get it. Like Yeah, if somebody it, the way it sounds like if somebody picks up all of the ammo out of the out of the trader, everybody's host. Everybody else is host. Oh, he's talking about the magazines yeah, like yeah. that you'll find around like the little books and stuff. Yeah. Oh. yeah, they can. They can read all of them and then screw everyone else out of the server. Now, typically, John plays in larger servers. Um, yeah. I typically prefer smaller ones or, you know, just among friends. Um, shout out to Kimchi. <laughs> she plays with me a lot. <laughs> we play a lot of seven days with her and her brother. Um, for sure. Um, it, it, if you're playing with a lot of people, I can see it being a problem. They may have to work on that as far as servers go. And like I said, still technically not a finalization of the game. There have been many things that they've changed and then ended up changing back or modifying further because it didn't work in certain yeah. ways. Um, I know a lot of people were hoping to get bandits this mod, and I've heard from some that we're going to have bandits, some that we're not. Um, so I am kind of hoping we get those bandits. I think it'll be kind of cool. One of the cool things that I'm excited for, and I know John will be excited for, because we both like to kill things in Seven Days to Die, is they ha are introducing double doors. And you know how sometimes the doors are halfway destroyed? You'll be able to shoot and melee through those doors now. Oh, so, so part of the door awesome. will still hold them back and you'll be able to hit through the cracks. Yes. Oh, that's yes. so much more convenient. I'm tired of like when the door is like half destroyed and you can see zombies on the other side. You can't shoot them through the door You, can't, you, you or you'll you'll damage the door. So that's that's cool. Yeah. Uh, AJ, about the, the magazine thing, they do have a cool system. Uh, they have uh, vending machines. And mm -hmm. what a lot of these larger servers will do is a lot of the players will build a second base in like one large like town and everybody will kind of work together to build like uh, little structures and stuff. They'll have like a little city, like unofficial city in the map uh, and people can like uh, create these vending machines, put stuff up for sale. Uh, and so I think with this magazine system, you're going to have a lot of people trying to sell these magazines uh in those in those vending machines which is good and bad you'll have people looting the hell out of like the bookstores and mailboxes uh to try yeah. and get those things uh so it's going to be harder to find and harder to upgrade like in the wild on those bigger servers but if you have a consistent way to make money um buying those things from the vending machine shouldn't be too bad and honestly the the game they do a great job at making um like selling selling goods to the trader pretty accessible and feel fair um you get like 20 percent value but with how much you can loot in that game it doesn't feel that bad when you when you still sell stuff to the trader so um yeah maybe maybe it'll be okay the the, the big problem i'm looking at is ammo for for this new upgrade oh yeah and the last thing that i have to mention about seven days is they are also going to make it where you can choose in your game you know how like you destroy a building um like maybe you're like me and you just really enjoy chaos and like to watch a building fall um i totally don't do that i totally do that um you know like sometimes you just like to light a building on fire and watch it 
go into flames. Um, but now they'll have an option. You don't have to do it. I think it's going to be automatically set to not respawn chunks, but they will have the option where you can choose. You know how sometimes you can have loot respawn? You can also have chunks respawn now. So, or you will be able to. So, they're like, say you destroy a building. Um, you know, if nobody goes onto those chunks for seven days or whatever you send it for, set it for, it'll respawn those chunks. That's that's actually a, a really important and a good update for the game. Um, yeah. Because when you uh, download a map, it downloads the base map, right? And so as you play on these larger servers, there's more and more that's customized about that map because everybody's making their own structures and it has to do those updates. But uh, that has a huge drag on the server. Um, I think having chunks like that reset is going to be beneficial to the, the owners, operators and runners of those servers uh, and the players that play on them. So um yeah, a lot of good changes. Uh, I do want to see bandits. Uh, I think uh, Alpha Twenty Two is going to be the last official, uh, last Alpha before they they actually release the game. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, I'm I'm okay with continuing to get free upgrades for the game, and as long as they want to give it to us. They are getting close to what their their goals are. They have like a list of goals, and they're almost there. So. I am I am excited, but they do you know they do make a lot of modifications in the game, and it's come a long way. It's it's definitely worth picking up, checking out, seeing how it runs, and you know playing around with it. It's it's a fun game. If you like building like me, if you like blowing up things like me, you know it's great. If you like killing zombies, it's great. If it's if you like all of these things, it's it's really great. So you know we we definitely have people hanging out in keystone hobbies that love playing seven days to die please join us um you'll see me there a lot you'll see john there a lot when i because typically if i'm playing i'm like john you should play with me not that we actually play in this you know do things together in the game half the time he's off doing quests the whole time and i'm trying to build a horde base so we don't die so <laughs> I got to get missions done. I'm running around doing missions at night and Laura's like, you don't go outside at night. It's dangerous then. And I'm like, I don't care if I die. I'll just respawn. It's whatever. <laughs> oh yeah. He, yeah. And you can see it. I told AJ the other day about how you, yeah. you die like three or four times and you're fine. I, I try and like not die ever. <laughs> uh, the, you were telling me too that you were like freaking out whenever John wasn't there. He was still in the server. He was like, John, you're going to die. Like it's almost hard time. Yeah, he was. I'm just he was AFK, just chilling in the, the one base. Well, so so it's not that I'm worried about John dying on Horde Night. It's that he was in the base that I had worked on, and I didn't want them destroying through because they. It would wasn't literally... a Horde base. It was uh, it yeah. was like a a, a crafting base. It's our normal base. base. It's our crafting base. So, and they'll tear right through those walls because they do. They they break down yeah. walls to get you. And so they would have torn right through those walls and torn the whole building down. We would have lost all our stuff. Wow. So I was like, you need to get out of there because if you destroy my base that I've been working, because I, I work, I, I play probably a little bit more on that server than John does. And so I'm like, if you <laughs> break down what I've built, you are in so much trouble. And he's like, I'll get there. I'll get there. I'm like, if, if they break down that base and I lose everything, I'm going to have to start a whole new map. We're starting over. We're starting over fresh. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. We have, we have a good time on there. I'm looking forward to the official release, but till then we have a, uh, we have pretty, pretty fun. It feels like a full game as is now. So um, yeah. The price is great too. I mean, you can't beat it for a game that they're constantly updating and like adding cool things to like, you can get it on sale sometimes for like eight bucks. And I mean, I don't know where it, where it's at right now, um, but it's, it's typically no more than 15. So I think the highest I've seen it is like 20, which is still even. It's still, you know, right around where it should be. I'd pay 20 bucks for it. I think I paid eight for it, but I would pay 20 for it. I think yeah, over time, like it because I've bought, I've bought 
game licenses for people. Like, I've given out Steam codes to people to play this game because I have fun with it. And, hey, the best way to have more fun with it is to get your friends to play. So um, mm-hmm. I've probably put well into, like, $60, $70 into Seven Days to Die just <laughs> buying extra codes for people. Like, when they're, you know, if they're, like, 7 8 bucks on Humble Bundle or Steam's running a special, like, why not pick up a gift code just to have one or two in the back? Actually, you know what? First person to comment on this video once we upload to YouTube, you get a seven days to die code. How about that? You must comment and like. Yeah, comment and, comment and like. Yeah, that's fine. And, and subscribe. And subscribe. Yes. And Thank and you, AJ. Subscribe. Look at you guys <laughs> knowing all this responsible YouTuber stuff. And I'm like, yeah, oh, just, yeah. just throw a comment on there. That's all we want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but... Uh, speaking of the channel, uh, I have a couple updates for the channel. Uh, we're uh, we're spinning down and closing down on uh, season two of Keystone Hobbies. So uh, we've had a great year. Uh, looking forward to 2023. The podcast on uh, Buzzsprout has had 2,046 downloads since we started publishing. Um, and we've published about 70 episodes and over 73 hours of content through Buzzsprout. Uh, collectively, uh, we have counted to 725 in Discord. We also have uh, 2,600 YouTube videos for a grand total of 4,626 views. Um, I just want to thank every one of our listeners and the families of the hosts for helping to support uh, and the friends of the hosts. And yeah, everybody who comes on, all of our guests. Uh, you know, uh, your support helps us make this channel possible. Um, and with that said, we are closing season two of Keystone Hobbies, but we have some real exciting updates to announce the start of season three. And the first episode will be ready probably uh, January 3rd. So be on the lookout for uh, season one or season three, episode one of Keystone Hobbies, January 3rd. Um, you know, it, I, I have to say with this whole project, one of my favorite parts about it is the Discord community that, that we have. We have a lot of awesome people, some friendly gamers, a friendly group there, um, you know, and e- even the people who are a little bit more sweaty and, you know, try harder in games know that we're all just looking to have a good time and everybody's really chill. So uh, if you haven't already joined our community in the Discord, do it. It's awesome. It's a great time. Yeah. Um, I've definitely had uh, a lot of fun since popping in this Discord a lot more. Um, I'm glad that you guys have brought me in here. I've had a lot of fun uh, coming in and talking with you guys. Um, yeah. I'm looking forward to keep going. Hell yeah. Let's make 2023 people. awesome. Uh, with that, uh, we'll see you guys on the next episode. Be on the lookout. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.